I was asked in the comment section recently when I was going to build an insert to replace the flexible plastic one that came with the port cable scroll saw. The truth is, I already have, and you may have noticed it in my last video when I was using the scroll saw. I was in the middle of a project at the time, and I was tired of my work bouncing around, so I made the insert, finished my project, and I didn't even think to make a video of it. But I'm going to remedy that now. I'll show you how I made it. First thing to do is to remove the insert so we can measure it. So for the top piece, we can just trace it right off the plastic one. Make sure you have a shot pencil. The inside one will have to measure. And if you do measure it, you'll find out that it is 2 and 11 sixteenths inch across. So we need to set our compass for half of that, which is 1 and 11 30 seconds. So we'll get that set. And I'm using 1 8 inch Luon for this, by the way. Now that we've got our circles drawn, we need to cut them out. You'll notice that the original plastic insert has this little nub that fits into this void and it keeps it from spinning around. I did not include this on the wooden disc. I have a different way of dealing with that we'll get to later on. I just thought that it was more trouble than it was worth and that it might not be strong enough to hold. Also, when I cut the wooden discs, I'm going to cut near the line, but I'm going to leave the line, and then I'll take it down the rest of the way on the disc sander. I'll mark where the high spots are, and I'll go back and forth a couple of times to the sander to make sure that I get it right. So I've been back and forth to the sander a few times, and I've gotten a nice fit. The smaller one fits nice and snug inside the lower hole there, and the top one fits right in the top. Now, the next thing to do is to glue these together, but you can't just take a guess on where to glue this. It's got to be pretty exact. So what I did was I took a piece of double-sided tape and put it on the smaller disc set that in where I wanted it I then figured out the orientation that I wanted the upper disc in and pushed it together now I know exactly where to glue this so I'm going to mark it out using a sharp pencil and put some registration marks on it so I can put it back in exactly the same place. And we'll peel it apart, glue it together and clamp it for a while.
So now using the registration marks I put on there, I want to line this up perfectly within those lines. So this is dry now and I can cut a hole in it for the blade to go through. Now if you look at the original one I made, you'll notice that the hole is very small. And this works really well. I was tired at that time of my work bouncing around and I wanted the hole as small as I could get it. But this time I think I'm going to make a slot that comes all the way down. I'm not going to zigzag it like this. I'm going to come straight down in the middle. And that way I can take this insert in and out without having to remove the blade. But first I have to find exactly where the blade sits. I'm going to do that right now. So I need to put a blade in and then measure it. Now you will find that this is not the center of this disc and I doubt that it would be in any of them. But I can still use my center finder to draw a straight line where I would like it to be. This is the bottom here. And this, where it ends, the mark that I put that I measured, is about where the middle of the blade is. This wants to extend beyond there, at least an eighth of an inch. There's going to be a lot of flex in the saw blade, and you have to allow for that. So I'm going to bring this back about an eighth of an inch, and then mark out a sixteenth on either side of this line. That's where I'm going to cut my groove. Now I'm going to cut this using the bandsaw. You could certainly use the scroll saw to cut it, but I think I'll get a straighter cut if I cut it on the bandsaw. Alright, so I gave it a quick hand sand and now we'll test the fit. That fits pretty good. The last thing we have to do that's functional on this is put on the little nub that's going to keep it from spinning around. So I'm going to put this in there, get it nice and straight the way that I want it, and then mark where that nub is going to be. So I've mounted the disc in my drill press chuck because I want it straight up and down. And I've chucked up the smallest drill that I have. That's a 1 16th drill. And I'm going to drill a very shallow hole. I only want it to be about 3 30 seconds, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch deep. I want to be very, very careful not to come out the side. And because of that, I used my awl and put a little center punch mark there. So let's get that done. This is the trickiest part. And that's it. So this is a common pin and it has a little beaded head on it. I'm gonna snip that off about halfway. A little bit of an angle on it because I want to drive it into the wood a little bit. So I'm going to fill the little hole that we drilled in the edge of the disc with some super glue gel. And you could use epoxy for this or even hot glue I suppose would work. You just want something to hold the pin in place. And even though that's there, I am going to drive it into the wood a little bit. So you want to make sure that this is as straight as you can get it you don't want it poking out of the wood and ruining the disc. And that's it. It's 
so it fits in there just fine. Now if you look, you'll notice that there is ever so slightly a lip on the edge. And I had that problem with the original one too. This wood just isn't quite thick enough to take it all up. So on the original one, I just cut this little gasket from a box that the soda came in. 12 pack of soda. And I put that around there and that worked fine. It took up the slack. It made it perfectly even. But I found that later on after I urethaned it, I didn't need that anymore because the urethane took up the slack and it, it was exactly the perfect size. So rather than fool with the gasket, I'm just going to go ahead and urethane this one and be done with it. And here's the finished insert. So now I have two different styles of insert that I can use depending on what kind of work I'm doing. And best of all, it won't vibrate like a bass speaker when I'm trying to cut the edge of a board. If you like my videos, then please like and subscribe. If you'd like to help keep this channel going, then visit my Patreon page. And as always, I thank you for watching.